You know, when we do undergrad, we are pretty much put into a bucket saying that you're doing computer science or you're doing electrical engineering or mechanical engineering. And if you're doing computer science, you're either doing databases or you're doing AI, you're doing networking. But most real world problems don't really have that. You don't just, problems are not just computing or mechanical engineering or electrical engineering. Since I started as faculty at University of Washington, uh, I've been pretty interested in actually solving real world problems through technology. And that requires working across different disciplines, different engineering disciplines within computer science, as well as across electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, uh, aerospace engineering. And that basically requires a lot of uh, interdisciplinary work. Um, and that's what's required to solve problems across health, as well as um, all kinds of other things which we have done. Sound is a very fundamental way in which we interact with the world. And so the question which we have been asking is, how do you provide more control so that you can program this acoustic environment around you so that you can give more control to the user so that they can have better control over what they're able to hear and what they don't want to actually hear. So that's what we have been working on. We've also been working on trying to use sound itself to enable capabilities, like maybe I can use sound to figure out in a completely contactless manner how you're breathing, what your heart rate is. And that's what we mean by contactless physiological sending, sensing using sound, where we can take a smartphone, take the microphones and speaker on the smartphone, emit inaudible signals from the smartphone using software, look at the reflections of the body, because when you're breathing, you have like tiny reflect, your, your chest is moving, and so the reflections are going to change. So we can use those changes in the reflections and using machine learning algorithms to extract out exactly what your breathing rate is or what your heart rate is, and that's pretty transformative. So what we showed is that we can transform these commodity devices which every person, almost every person on the planet has, into an active sonar system. So it's kind of like how a bat ends up working. So bats can see through the dark. So the way it works is you send inaudible signals from your phones or your smartphone or any of these devices' uh, speaker, look at the reflections, analyze the reflections from your human body and uh, extract out uh, how exactly the motion is happening. And the advantage of doing this actually is that all you need is a microphone and a speaker from a hardware perspective, which almost everyone has. So this is transformative in the sense that you can just use software and suddenly transform these devices into something which they were not originally designed for. And that is, uh, and it can be pretty helpful in terms of healthcare diagnosis. You can try to do sleep apnea diagnosis. You can track how people are sleeping. You can track if someone has like a irregular heart rhythm, for example, and all you need is a smartphone. It doesn't even have to be on your body. You can have it like a meter away and it can do all these interesting um, and extremely useful beneficial things uh, for humans. The whole idea of augmenting humans and AI is something which I'm super excited about. Imagine that you go to restaurants these days, everything is super packed, everything is super uh, noisy. But imagine if I can just create a bubble where only people within the bubble around me, on, around my table, for example, I can hear them really well. The people who are outside the table, I can't really hear anything about them in the first place. Or imagine I'm out on the street, I want to listen to just my friend who I'm talking with, but I don't want to listen to anyone else. Can you do that? This requires intelligence from your headphones or your AirPods so that they understand what a human sounds like, what your friend sounds like, or what distance is. Can you create a bubble? And that's all the kind of stuff which we are doing. And this is kind of transformative because it really gives every person control about what they want to hear in their environment. And um, if you think about today's existing noise cancelling headsets, they either cancel everything or they basically let everything in. What we are doing here is basically giving much more finer gain control where people can decide for themselves what in their environment they want to hear. So effectively, they're able to program their acoustic scenes in real time. And this can be transformative for billions of people who wear AirPods and millions of people who use hearing aids because if you have hearing loss, hearing aids are really, really, really bad today because they amplify noise, they also amplify the speaker as well as the noise, which means that if you are in a very crowded environment, it's really challenging to hear anything. So people kind of avoid 
going to parties and social settings or restaurants because they can't really understand what's happening. So giving people this kind of uh, ability to control what they want to hear and final reign control would really, really help them in terms of um, their social life, in terms of how they can interact with people. In the, in the US, every kid who's born, almost every kid who's born, gets a newborn hearing screen to see if they have any kind of a hearing loss. Growing up in India, I didn't ever have a newborn hearing screen and I don't think it's still universal right now in India. And one of the reasons is that the device cost is pretty expensive to do these newborn hearing screens, which means that even in cities, let alone in ta smaller towns and villages, it's really hard to get people access to these $8,000 devices to do a newborn hearing screen for every newborn baby. So what we showed is that we can just use a smartphone and a uh, Potentially, and even like one of these ear, 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 ear earbuds, which you can get on a plane, you throw it away, it's like less than a dollar. You connect it to a smartphone, running software, we can basically get the same exact accuracy for detecting when someone has hearing loss, a baby has a hearing loss, as a $8,000 device. So you can imagine something like this can be pretty beneficial for people uh, across the country, across the world, uh, where effectively the only reason why they're expensive is because people can charge money. And if we leverage these ubiquitous devices, which are already in people's hands, we can really bring this technology to the actual, to a much wider set of people and transform hearing care. And hearing, newborn hearing care is extremely important because the first one year is very important for neurological development of kids. So AI doesn't really have to be about uh, automating things or displacing jobs. You can also use AI to actually enhance the capabilities of all of us. Uh, and that could be hearing, vision, uh, intelligence, memory, all these things which can be pretty beneficial. I think that's what I'm extremely excited about, about how we can use AI to uh, benefit humans, not just automation. I think the one thing which I have been following is uh, go after problems which other people are not uh, really focused on right now. If everyone is doing something, trying to do the same exact problem, there's enough smart people out there, they can do it much better. Um, you want to focus your time on solving problems which are important, yet something which are not being given enough attention by uh, a lot of people out there so that you can solve and have an actual, make, make some kind of a difference. I have tried to avoid following the uh, buzzwords. Um, if everyone is working on large models, there's enough people working on it. I don't need to work on it. There's not many people working on hearing. So I want to work on things like dose problems where it's easier to have a... Uh, you'll have some time to think about the problems and like actually make an impact. Uh, and you're not always competing with people all the time. And there are so many problems in India, for example. There is, uh, people can locally, uh, there are so many uh, unique problems which are probably not there in the US. So instead of trying to just, trying to do what everyone else in the US is doing, trying to focus on the problems which are ro locally more relevant, um, or like define the problems that you are facing yourself and trying to solve them which other people are not trying to solve is probably a is at least a path I'm following how do we push the boundaries of science fiction and reality and in particular can we uh, create battery free devices which can be so small and come battery free computers that are so small that they can fly in the wind uh, you can disperse all these sensors which are battery free they can change their shape and fall in the wind we have done a lot of work of this kind uh, but i do think that technology is moving towards a direction where computers and intelligence is going to be so small that they can potentially also be battery free that you don't even need to actually worry about charging the actual tiny AI computer uh, and I think that's where uh, it'll be exciting to actually think about what that means and exploring that in a socially uh, um, thoughtful manner so that you're not just unleashing a bunch of AIs which are which you can't unplug and and I do think that what's important is as we explore technology, we think about how it's solving real-world problems and not just exploring technology for the sake of it. 
Yeah, I'm um, pretty grateful to uh, get this award in the first place. Not something I was expecting to get. Uh, but this is actually a great spotlight on all the work we are uh, doing on augmenting humans and AI in particular. Uh, and more importantly, I think it's also going to hopefully tell people in India, all the researchers and scientists, that uh, these kind of problems can be solved using AI and technology. And I'm really um, excited about the kind of visibility this prize brings to our work.